Good morning, friends. I'm Ben Hayes, pastor of First Baptist Church, Dadeville, Alabama, bringing you our thought for the day. It is Tuesday morning, October the 20th. Can you believe it? Uh, the month of October has uh, quickly flown by, and we've got another beautiful day in store for us today because it's the day the Lord has made for you and for me, and God has so many great plans for us today. I hope that you will discover what those plans are and that you will find a uh, the time to praise him for what he has done for you. Uh, that's the way to start your day, by the way, is start with just a little bit of praise and thanksgiving, just telling him how grateful you are for who he is, as well as for all the things that he's done for you. Well, today, if you've got your Bibles, uh, one more time in Proverbs chapter 12, as uh, we, we talk about uh, some of the wise sayings of King Solomon. Uh, I love the fact that that uh, there are certain themes that travel throughout the entire book. Sometimes, as we said yesterday, it's just uh, a hodgepodge of wise sayings. But as you come down to verse 17, he focuses for a good while on what is a very important theme in the book of Proverbs. And wisdom tells us this. Wisdom helps us to understand that honesty is not only the best policy, but it is the way to please God. And uh, that's one of the problems that we have in our world today. You know, used to, if you made a promise, it was a promise. People expected you to, to keep it. Today, it's as if you make a promise and nobody's surprised when you break it. Uh, but here's what the wise King Solomon says. He who speaks truth declares righteousness, but a false witness deceit. There's one who speaks like the piercings of a sword, but the tongue of the wise promotes health. The truthful lips shall be established forever, but a lying tongue is but for a moment. The seed is in the heart of those who devise evil, but counselors of peace have joy. No grave trouble will overtake the righteous, but the wicked shall be filled with evil. Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, but those who deal truthfully are his delight. You look at that last verse in verse 22, and you see how deep this uh, this problem is and how much God hates lies. Uh, he says it's an abomination to the Lord. That word abomination is a very strong word, uh, and it, it means uh, the worst possible uh, crime has, has been committed, the worst possible sins have been committed. Now, I know that, that we, we, tell, we say that, that all sin is sin. Uh, there's no category of sin, uh, but there are just certain things that God has called abominations, and one of those is, is lying. And that's because he hates those, those, uh, the, the concept of deceit. Jesus made it very clear. He said to, to his disciples that when you have the, the love of God in your heart, when you are a true follower of his, then your yeas are going to be yea, your nays are going to be nay. You're going to tell the truth. You're going to speak truth because truth is so vitally important. Um, you know this as well as I do. But if you break uh, the trust that people have with you by lying to them, it is hard for them ever to rebuild that trust again. It's hard uh, for them to ever believe you again. And, and that's why it's so important that as believers we are known as people of truth. Because if we are not speaking the truth all the time, if a lost person catches us in a falsehood, then they naturally believe that uh, if we're lying about this, we might be lying about other things, uh, and most importantly, that we might be lying about the gospel of Jesus Christ. So it's so vitally important that we are truth speakers as well as truth seekers, that we, we, we make sure that we keep our commitments. Uh, I'll never forget as a young pastor, uh, we had a man in our church by the name of uh, Brother Fred. Brother Fred was a sweet, sweet older man. He was legally blind. Uh, Brother Fred would uh, organize his uh, cabinets uh, by color. And so he would know that if he was uh, opening a can of vegetables, if it was orange, it was either carrots or sweet potatoes. He didn't know which, but he said he just never minded. He just always got what he, what, uh, he saw the color. And so Brother Fred, being legally blind, didn't have anybody around him. A lot of folks did not go to see him. And I had made the promise one Sunday. I said, I'm going to come see you this week. And I got busy because as pastors, we do that sometimes. We get busy. 
<clears throat> and it just slipped my mind, and I never went by to see him. I didn't do it purposefully. I didn't do it intentionally. I just forgot. And that next Sunday, I knew something was bothering him, and I said, Brother Fred, are you okay? And he just looked at me, and he said, I waited for you all week to come see me. And that was all he said, and my heart was broken. Now, fortunately, he, he continued to trust me, and we rebuilt that trust, and I apologized to him. But for unbelievers, if we break trust, we lose the opportunity to share with them the truth of the gospel. We lose the opportunity, the foundation that we have to declare to them that Jesus Christ is the only way. That's why lying is such an abomination to, to God, and that's why he hates it so de desperately. And that's why we should hate it. We should be people who speak the truth always. There's no such thing as little white lies or great big lies. All lies are an abomination to God. In fact, God hates it so much that in Revelation chapter 21, verse 8, he includes liars as uh, among the group that will spend eternity in hell. Why? Because lying is one of the things that prove that you are not a believer. Dishonesty proves that you are not a true follower of Jesus Christ. So let your yeas be yea and your nays be nay today and tomorrow and every day to come. I hope that you have a great day. Be blessed and trust in the Lord as he gives you strength.